Hi everyone. We've got a great video from WatchCard today. It highlights the way um, cyber, cyber threats are taking advantage of uh, firms during the pandemic. I know we're out of level one now, but it's still good background information to learn. Uh, look forward to these eight minutes uh, clip here. Thanks. Hey guys, we've got uh, Martin Lethbridge in the UK, Poochery, Ryan Poochery in Iowa, and special guest, uh, Corey Knockreiner out of our uh, Seattle area. Hey, Corey. Hey, we've been doing these quick videos uh, during this pandemic, kind of offering some tips and tricks to people around, you know, working from home, security tips, bandwidth optimization tips, and uh, we got some comments, and a lot of those comments were around people that are like the heads of their IT departments, or maybe they're actually or have a security team, and they're concerned about kind of the the near term, you know, what what new threats are out there or old threats that are becoming really popular that they should be thinking about, say in the next 30 days, and we. Uh, we all scratched our chins and said, I wish we knew someone uh, that knew a thing or two about security. And lo and behold, we've got Corey Knockreiner, WatchGuard CTO. So Corey, <laughs> give us a couple of uh, advice. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot going on, unfortunately, because of the pandemic. First, I hope all our watchers and viewers and listeners out there are staying safe, are isolating and helping beat this thing back. Uh, I know I am. Actually, I, I came into the office today, so sorry, I'm not socially isolating. Kidding, green screen. Anyways, so what is going on based on the pandemic? What kind of new threats? Well, one thing we see for sure is a, a big increase in phishing due to COVID. I mean, I, I think one of the things me and my threat team hate the worst about cyber criminals is they're kind of masters of malicious psychology. Whenever there's any sort of big event in the world, pop culture that someone that's taking off, but also really big tragedies. Like I remember the tsunami that happened uh, in, in Asia Pacific killing a lot of people. And during that time, there's a lot of Red Cross emails. So of course the jerk fishers would kind of daisy chain on that. And they would use the topic of the tsunami to try to get more people to click links. So one big threat that is happening right now is there's a lot of domain registration around pandemic, COVID, coronavirus, and any sort of tertiary subjects that have to do with the pandemic. And to go with that, we're seeing a lot more phishing that kind of uses coronavirus as a lure. So that's one of the things. Awesome, yeah, no, that's, uh, we've always kind of said, you know, the, these crises, they bring the best and the worst out of humanity. And to those jerk fishers, get, get a life. Do, do, do something with your talents. You know, let's, let's help people. I know. Yeah. yeah, it's kind yeah. of disgusting, and it's really bad when they, they will, you know, uh, right now we're probably donating and helping people out because of the pandemic, which is a good thing, you know, keep trying to do that. But do watch out for these emails, because they will jump on something like a Red Cross email. So very basic tips you've heard before, you know, you can look at the domain and try to make sure it's legit. But here's my recommendation just don't click a link in the email. I mean, if you get an email that you do think it's legit and you want to react to, manually go to the site and find whatever the email is referring to. Yeah, I know it's quicker and easy to click that link, but you can, you can manually go there. Uh, one other interesting thing we see related in attacks is, is obviously, you know, whether it's good or bad, certain uh, video conferencing applications are getting a lot of notice. Obviously, you know, we might be sick of hearing the name by now, but Zoom took off. Uh, on the stock market for a while. And because of that notice, they're also getting notice from both attackers and researchers. So one, researchers have been finding vulnerabilities in Zoom and other video conferencing apps. But more importantly, attackers have been doing things like uh, registering fake Zoom domains as well. So they're trying to prey on people that might be going to their, their elementary school or, or their extracurricular dance school through Zoom. So they might get a, a domain that looks close to Zoom, hoping you click on it really to install malware. And they're just doing things uh, like a Zoom bombing, which is trying to brute force and kind of join meetings like we're having right now. Imagine if a hacker jumped on and started griefing us and yelling at us and calling us dirty names. So obviously a lot of us are using these sort of video conferencing tools to do more work at home. So another thing you should watch out for is just phishing uh, related to these apps. And make sure if you run these apps, always keep them up to date. If they say they have some sort of new update, definitely run it right away. Those are some solid tips. So if you're if you're in uh, in IT, you could be a small company and just you know IT as a side project of yours, or a pretty large company with a full CISO and, and security team. 
I think those are relevant tips for both, right? Uh, maybe it's time to refresh that fishing education to the employee base. Uh, there's plenty of resources online. Uh, at at washyard.com, you guys can also find information about some of the protection services we have around email phishing protection. Um, and also the, the web conferencing, you know, we're, we have no choice but to remain connected over web conferencing apps. Update them. Don't just click the remind me tomorrow button, right? <laughs> Update <them. laughs> Over and over. <laughs> so, uh, Martin, Ryan, give you guys a chance. Do you want to add anything to uh, Corey's tips? Well, I mean, we talk about corporates and stuff like that, but also help out your friends and family. I mean, uh, Cloudflare have opened up a new thing for home users. You know, point your DNS to their DNS to help for phishing and, well, not phishing, for malware and for obviously websites. You can't control it. You can't say what type of sites you want to have category against, but, you know, help your next door neighbors. They can't afford, they may not have that sort of technology, but you've got the knowledge, share it. So there you go. Absolutely. Do something like Cloudflare. I think that's a good one to share around. It's free as well. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think, Ryan, you nailed it. Um, you know, everybody's stuck at home. It's a great time to do some educational training around security. So send them some videos, make your own videos, um, have them watch because, you know, teaching them not to click is the easiest and the cheapest way to protect them from a lot of these new threats that are coming out. And there's a lot of online learning centers that are giving away their education for free uh, in the month of uh, April. I think Udemy is one of them. Uh, so to, to Ryan's uh, point, if you want this education, I mean, there's a lot of cybersecurity courses you can get there. That's what's really nice to see people opening up their, their paywalls to edu educational material here around security. It's great to see everyone kind of come together. Before we wrap it up, do we have time for a one-minute pro tip, Ryan? I know we, we have limited time with our social media audience, but I know a lot of IT guys have been commenting, and so I want to give one pro tip directly for the HQ IT guys. And I know all of them have probably set up laptops or desktops for their users to use at home, and they realize they're going into a totally untrusted wireless environment, right? They can't control the, the home user, so they really are beefing up the laptop. All of them are using VPN, which we love and we provide at WatchGuard. But one pro tip about VPN is if you don't secure the desktop enough, that VPN can be a backdoor into your network just as much as it's a secure channel to your network. And what I mean by that is if your laptop gets hacked because maybe you didn't do a good enough job securing it, that VPN kind of gives them unrestricted access. So my pro tip is realize that you don't have to give unrestricted access with VPN. Takes a little work for the IT guys out there, but our fireboxes and our VPNs have full capability to have policy-based VPN rules. So if you have an accountant, have them have a VPN to do all their accounting work, but limit their policies to just kind of the accounting infrastructure and pieces they have to get to. Don't give them access to the whole kingdom. It does take a little more work and setup, and you have to maintain it when people need new things. But since VPNs can be powerful tools if you open them totally, I, I just recommend you taking the time to, to do more granular policies for your VPNs. Thanks for the, the quick pro tip for those guys, Ryan. I am so glad you you uh, took, the, the, took the time to do that, Corey. Yes, that, that is really, really important. Uh, not all VPNs are the same. <laughs> that's, that's, that's absolutely great to, to bring in there. Uh, in, any final words, guys, before we wrap up? Stay yeah. safe. Thanks, Corey. Hey, Wash, your Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Second speak. And jerk, jerk fishers, get a job. <laughs> yeah. With a pH, by the way. We like other fishers. They can keep bringing us food. We need it. <laughs> yeah. Take care.